Today, we'll learn about various types of rocks, how they are formed, and how they are interrelated to each other through a rock cycle. So let's begin our journey to the amazing world of rocks in this rock lab at UMass Boston. What is a rock? Rock is a coherent, naturally occurring solid which consists of an aggregate of one or more minerals. There are three major categories of rocks, namely igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. A rock cycle is a model that describes the formation, deformation, and reformation of a rock through igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic processes. The story of rock cycle begins with igneous rocks which are formed by cooling and solidification of molten hot material called magma. These can be further divided into two types, intrusive and extrusive. As the name suggests, intrusive igneous rocks like granite are formed inside the earth while extrusive igneous rocks like basalt are formed on the surface of earth by solidifying lava which is called magma if it is inside the earth which oozes out of the earth's interior through volcanoes or fissures. The rate of cooling of lava or magma determines the grain size of igneous rocks. That is faster cooling rocks have very fine grain crystals like obsidian and pumice while slow cooling leads to coarse grain crystalline rocks like diorite. The second type of rocks in our story are sedimentary rocks which are formed at or near the surface by a slow process of a physical weathering of pre-existing rocks by the action of wind, water and ice, b chemical weathering causing dissolution of rocks, evaporation of mineral rich water, or by C, biological weathering by plant roots cracking and dissolving rocks. These weathered and eroded materials are called sediments, which are carried away either by wind, water, or ice. Once these get deposited, they form layers of sediments one above the other, leading to compaction and cementation. Other sedimentary rocks such as coal and limestone are formed from the remains of dead and decaying plants and animals. The final rock type is called metamorphic rocks. These rocks are formed by changing one type of rock into another due to heat, pressure or chemical reactions inside the earth as a result of squashing, stretching or shear. For example, marble is formed from limestone and slate is formed from shale. Now let's talk about the characteristics based upon which various types of rocks are categorized. Each of the three rock groups contain different individual rock types which can be distinguished from each other by physical characteristics such as grain size. The size of individual grains can be measured in millimeter or centimeter. Some grains are so small that they cannot be seen with the naked eye, while some are big enough to be seen on a rock surface. Some rocks may contain all the grains of equal size, while others may contain a variety of different sized grains. Then comes composition. The term rock composition refers to the proportion of different chemicals making up the rock. Then is texture. It is the appearance of a rock that results from the size, shape and arrangement of the mineral grains in the rock. The last one is layering. Some rock surfaces contain distinct layers defined by varied compositions and textures. For example, in case of sedimentary rocks, layering is referred to as bedding, while in metamorphic rocks, it is called metamorphic foliation. However, rock texture plays a very vital role in identification of rocks. Each of the rock types have distinctive textures that can be used for their classification. For example, in case of igneous rocks, 
Major textures include phanaritic or coarse grained. The constituent minerals are macroscopic. Individual crystals or grains range from 1 to more than 5 millimeters. The next is aphanitic or fine grained. Minerals, crystals or grains that are macroscopic in size cannot be discerned with the naked eye. Third is porphyritic. Macroscopic minerals or grains are embedded in a matrix of microscopic crystals. Larger crystals or grains are phenocrysts, while smaller grains in which they are embedded is called ground mass. Next is vesicular. Characterized by the presence of vesicles, tubular ovoid or spherical cavities in rocks which result from gas bubbles being trapped in the rock. Last is glassy, which lacks a crystalline structure or an atomic structure due to rapid rate of cooling. Major textures that can help identify sedimentary rocks are clastic, rocks derived from detritus that have been transported, deposited, and lithified. Then is dense, sedimentary rocks composed mainly of silt and clay particles. Then crystalline, characteristic of a sedimentary rock composed of interlocking crystals. Then an amorphous texture, which is a very compact texture found in rocks composed of finely divided non-crystalline material deposited by chemical precipitation. Then is oolitic texture formed of spheroidal particles which are less than 2 millimeters in diameter which are called oolits made up of silica or calcium carbonate formed by deposition of the material out of the solution onto a nucleus as concentric layers. Then is bioclastic produced by aggregate of fragments of organic remains referred to as fossils such as shells, bones, teeth, leaves and seeds or as fossiliferous such as footprints, leaf prints, worms, burrows, etc. Major textures to be looked for in case of metamorphic rocks include foliated in which mineral grains are oriented in a parallel or sub-parallel arrangement. The other one is non-foliated in which mineral orientation is not there and the grains are commonly composed of a single mineral. Keeping those diagnostic characteristics in mind, let's try to match the rock characteristics with their rock names. On the left side of the screen, we have displayed the following characteristics. Crystals, sand or pebbles, gas bubbles, fossils, ribbon-like appearance. And on the right side, we have displayed the rock types. Sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. Which belong together? Correct crystals with igneous rocks. Think about the solidification of water into ice crystals due to cooling and compare it to cooling and solidification of magma. Sand or pebbles with sedimentary rocks. Think of individual sand grains or pebbles settling out and forming sediments. Gas bubbles with igneous rocks Recall the surface of pumice stone that we, especially girls, use. Fossils with sedimentary rocks. In which type of rocks do we find our coal and petroleum reserves? Ribbon-like appearance with metamorphic rocks. What happens when we apply excessive stress on an object? It takes a wavy appearance, right? As you can see, each rock type has a variety of forms and thus you cannot simply depend on just one diagnostic feature to identify rocks. Rather, a combination of multiple diagnostic characteristics including texture, grain size, composition and color can be used. These features can be successfully used to identify rocks. 
Be sure to review this week's reading materials to learn more about rocks and make sure to check the lab assignment for another fun activity on rocks.